it is. What was I digging around for back here in the sleeper? Way back in the sleeper, I've got a cabinet in the very bottom drawer of the cabinet. Uh, I've got stuff stored back here, like extra headlight and uh, the oil for my uh, generator, the, the oil I use for changing uh, oil, oil changes on my generator, uh, extra filters, uh, extra uh, uh, windshield wipers, things like that. Anyway, I decided um, I need to change my oil filter or my fuel filter. Um, my fuel filter is getting clogged up. Well, how how does that happen? What happens on the fuel filter getting clogged? Um, your fuel filter filters out dirt obviously you know any kind of grime or dirt that might get into fuel uh, you don't want that going through your injector system but it also filters out water and uh, algae believe it or not algae grows in fuel yep in diesel um, uh, I don't know how algae can live in diesel you'd think that would kill it but apparently it's <laughs> pretty tough stuff but um, I think what my problem today though is water. Uh, it's been so wet and rainy and humid and everything. And uh, how do you get water in your fuel? Well, you get water in your fuel by um, the underground tanks at the truck stops. They're, they're underground and they fill them full of fuel, okay? Well then, as they pump that fuel out, something has to replace the fuel. It's air. So the air atmosphere goes down in there. Well, that's humid air. So that humidity condenses on the uh, walls of the tank on the inside. So after a while, that water will drip down and go down and water, you know, oils, oil floats on water, so water sinks to the bottom. Well, eventually the pump will, will suck some of that water up. It'll come up and get into the system and, and uh, eventually get pumped into the truck's fuel tanks. And then eventually that goes into the fuel filter. Get in that, that, that fuel filter is the last the last place it can be caught before it goes into your engine. So you got, I've got two fuel filters on here. If I said oil filter, I meant fuel filters. Uh, I've got two fuel filters on here, a primary and a secondary. Well, the primary is a big one, believe it. And I've always wondered, is a primary and a secondary, as the fuel's coming through, isn't the first fuel filter, wouldn't that be the first primary fuel filter and then the next one is the secondary? Or, or is it the, the main fuel filter is the primary and the additional one on the outside of the frame, that's the secondary, even though it's the first one that gets the fuel, I'm so confused. It's like a church. What's the inside of a church? Where, okay, on the outside of a church, where's the, where's the front of a church? On the outside, it's a, the doors. But when you walk inside, now all of a sudden you're at the back of the church. The front of the church is on the other end. <laughs> it's so confusing. Anyway, <laughs> I always thought that was a funny little thing. Uh, where's the front of the church? Well, it depends on where you're standing, <laughs> inside or outside. Um, anyway, what we doing here? Um, so the fuel filter, the, <laughs> the, um, the fuel comes out of the tank and, and it gets goes through the secondary fuel filter first, which is this one okay that's what this is uh, secondary fuel filter and then it goes into the primary fuel filter and then goes into the engine well the secondary fuel filter is clogged and I'm pretty sure it's just water it happens especially this time of year when it's cold the ground's still cold but the warm water warm moist air is going in so there's a lot of humidity in, in the air therefore water gets into the tanks uh, that also, not only underground tanks, but the tanks on the truck. As I suck fuel out, air goes into that tank too, and I get uh, moisture accumulation in there. Anyway, uh, so the water clogs up the filters, and you got to re replace them. So what happens here, i to start the truck up again. So what happens is, see that fuel filter? See how it's going up? So I just started the truck up. Well, as you can see where the red is about seven pounds of uh, suction, uh, we're at 14 or 15 pounds just idling. As I go down the highway, the engine's revved up. See how that really, it's pegging, it's really, really clogged up. When I let off the exhaust, the exa or the, the gas, it's not sucking as much fuel now, so it'll go back down a little ways. But going down the highway, it's pegged out at 20. So, with that, 
we got to change the filter. So I'm going to get out, set up the camera and everything, and I'm going to show you how I change the filter. It's pretty easy. The hardest part is this is empty, and I got to fill it up with diesel. So uh, where do you get diesel? That's why I stopped at the truck stop. So I got to run up there and get some diesel put in it, and then come back and I'll put it put it on the truck. All right, be back with you shortly. So we're down here, we got the hood open, we got the wrench, everything's ready to go to take this filter off. And here's my new my new filter. I went up to the fuel island and uh, a driver put some fuel in here so I, it, does, it won't be sucking air. You want to fill that up with fuel and set that there so it doesn't fall over. This is the primary fuel filter up on the engine. This is the secondary, but this is the first place the fuel comes from the tank. It comes to this filter first, then to this filter, and then goes into the engine. All right, so what we've got here, I'm going to take this filter off, and uh, there's a little O-ring gasket that will stay on there. I need to pull that off, put this new O-ring on, and then put the new filter on and snug it up. Okay? All right. Just to show you, this is a wrench. Uh, <laughs> it's a basically a channel or a, a vice grip. It's a vice grip. It's got this special hook on the top up here, and this chain comes around, and it can it's adjustable for whatever different size of fuel filter you you've got. So I can use it on this one. I can use it on that. I can go over on the other side and use it on my oil filter if I have to. Um, the problem I have with it is when you get it on there and you go to tighten or uh, uh, screw it off. It dents the can real bad, and uh, who cares? You're getting ready to throw it away anyway. But if it's on there really, really tight, you end up tearing the can up and can't get the, the filter off. But anyway, we got it loose here. All right, and we're gonna swap these out. And I gotta take that O ring off. Oh, I need a stick. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna put this stuff. I trust that. Set it down here. It's tired. It's one thing about it, you get diesel on you and it stinks like hell for the. I'll smell like diesel for the next two days. These gloves are going to be shot now. I can use them for other stuff, but they won't be going back in the cab. There's that o ring. Take it off. And you dabble that in a little bit of fluid. Fluid fuel. And you stick her on there. Just as simple as that. Uh, which one's the new ones down here? Okay, I feel it snugging up. And he just put her on the hand tight. That's it. We're done. So let me put my tools away and we'll get back up in the truck and fire it up. Alright, that's all there is to that. We are done. Got all the tools put away, got everything done. Um finally let's show you the show you the gauge now. Turn the lights on. There you go. That shows you the gauge. See, it's much, much lower now. So, we're all good. Okay, uh, 
this video wasn't real long, so I thought I've got a few extra minutes. I'm going to talk to you about Jake brakes. Teach you what those are. Uh, Jake brakes are a com engine compression brake. Okay. Um, Jakes are the the the, ter the term Jakes comes from Jacobs. Okay. There's a company called Jacobs that invented it back in the 60s. Okay. Um, Jacobs invented it and what I understand Cummins patented it I guess but you can get Jake's on all the different varieties of engines not just Cummins you can get them on Cats and Detroit's and whatever uh, and, and uh, Mercedes and International and Ford and all, all of the different engines you can get a, you had to get the right uh, application for it but anyway they became real popular in your your Cats and Cummins and, and Detroit's and your over road long haul trucks during the 70s, really into the 80s. Okay, um, when I started driving back in '87, there were still you know there was still a sizable number of trucks out here that didn't have Jakes on them yet. Uh, they were a luxury in the 70s. In the 80s they become a commonplace, and by the 90s they were just everywhere. Almost every truck had them um, because the price had come down, I suppose, and uh, also it just companies realized the the cost of the jake system on the engine uh, was offset by the, the added uh, brake life of the brake pads because it you know when you use your jakes you really save your brake uh, your uh, your wheel brakes your tire brakes <clears throat> so um, what are jakes jakes are a comp engine compression system is what they are and um, what happens in, in your car, okay, if you're in a, I mean, almost everybody's been in a, a, a small pickup or whatever, a manual pickup or a manual car, okay, automatics, it doesn't work too well, but in a manual transmission, and you're going up through the gears, and let's say it's a four-speed transmission, you get up into third gear, and you're, you're accelerating, and then you let off, <sighs> you feel that, that back pressure, and it holds you back, okay? <clears throat> That's kind of a jake brake, okay? It's an unintentional jake brake that just works because of the way car engines, or gasoline engines, are are made. Uh, a gasoline engine, when you let off the throttle, the throttle valve closes, and it doesn't let any more air go into the piston, okay? So it, it causes a back pressure, like a vacuum. Okay, your four-stroke, four-stroke, uh, uh, your four-stroke engine, your Stroke one is intake, sucking air and fuel mixture in, okay? Uh, stroke two is compression, three is explosion, and four is exhaust, okay? On a car, when you let off, on a gas engine, when you let off the gas, it closes the throttle, bo the throttle body down, and air can't flow into the engine, therefore causing a vacuum in the number one stroke, okay? That slows you down a little bit. You feel that back pressure and that, mm, that, that, that resistance. In a diesel, it doesn't work that way. They don't have a throttle body, okay? Air just flows in and flows out. Uh, uh, more complicated than that, but still. It doesn't have a throttle body, therefore there's no butterfly valve in there opening and closing, okay? Because of that, when you let off the gas, like right now, let me turn the Jake off, and I'm in 18th gear, cruising down the road, and I let off the gas. Nothing happened. Okay, I'm not accelerating anymore, but I'm, I don't get that back pressure that you would feel in a car. Okay, so what happens is Jacobs invented this system that instead of it creating a vacuum in the number one stroke, they created a pressure in the number four stroke. So as it goes, you know, number one, number two, number three, and number four stroke, that fourth stroke is just trying to push exhaust out through the exhaust valves into the exhaust system and out the stack. As it's trying to push that air up, Jacobs, the system on there, it's a hydraulic system that goes on your cams, it holds that valve closed, okay, until the very last second, right to where it's almost top dead center. So you've got all this compression, just like in your number two stroke, there's no fuel in it, okay, and there's all this uh, exhaust, you know, it's burnt fuel. So you have all this compression coming up, and right at the very last second, the valve pops open. And that's where you hear this pop, okay? And when there's all, there's six of them, six, <laughs> six, <laughs> six. <laughs> when there's 
there's six pistons and they're firing in order bup, 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 real fast. That's where you get that bup, 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 that popping noise that jakes are known for. Okay. So when I let off the brakes, I got my jake on now. I got my compression brake on. Actually, these are jakes on a cat. Okay. Uh, I've got my compression brake on and I let off. You hear it? Okay. So what happens is that pop at the end is what gives it that sound. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't like that uh, the, the loud noise of Jake brakes. Uh, truckers are some kind. Of, sometimes their worst, their worst, the best worst enemy. Okay. Um, truckers like straight pipes. Okay. Yeah, just like motorcycle or, uh, uh, Harley riders, they like Jake. Uh, they like straight pipes on their on their bikes. They like the sound of noise. They like that, okay? Other people, it's annoying to, okay? Me, I like it, you know? I like straight pipes on just about any vehicle. I got straight pipes on my pickup, you know? Now, I got cherry bombs on my pickup. But, um, but anyway, it, uh, it's just that cool sound, you know? Like a V8 engine, it just has that cool sound. Now, some people, they don't like that sound at all, you know? Um, I don't really particularly like Jake's when I'm trying to sleep at 3 in the morning, some truck driver comes off the off ramp with really loud straight pipes, you know. Um, so, I mean, I can understand some people don't like it, you know. It, it's, there's a time and a place for everything, right? Now, mine, I've, I've got a muffler on mine. I've got straight pipes on the truck, but underneath I've got a muffler on it. So, these are muffled. They're not real loud. Uh, uh, you can hear it through the camera and everything, but... They're not those really loud, raspy ones that people don't like. So, um, so anyway, hope I cleared up what Jake brakes are. Um, probably made this video too long now, so I'm going to shut up and let you go back to do whatever you were doing.